So agave is another one of those red flags. Agave in our community has been like, it's okay, it's natural, it comes from cactus. True, true, and true. But our community, if you ask them about high fructose corn syrup, they'd be like, it's bad, it's all fructose. Well, high, high fructose corn syrup is 50 to 70% fructose. Agave is 90% fructose. Wow. You could argue yeah. it's worse for you than high fructose corn syrup. Sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar. I don't care if it's rice. I don't care if it's um, maple syrup. I don't care if it's agave or high fructose corn syrup. It's all the same thing. Once it gets in there, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So be really conscious of what those things, what the, how they're trying become savvy, become detective, and how are they trying to trick me? When you look at foods, don't look at the nutrition facts. Doesn't matter. Look at the ingredients. That's what matters. What confidence is has nothing to do with winning or the leaderboard. What confidence is, is knowing that you giving your best effort is enough. Hello, Ben. Hey, Patrick. What's happening? Uh, today we are going to do something we've done a couple times uh, now, um, but that is to steal an episode of the gym's internal podcast, see if anyway, um, that you and uh, coach over there, Dan, um, do pretty much pretty much weekly, um, where you guys sort of tackle questions and topics that are re relevant uh, to the membership over at CrossFit. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, uh, like today, you guys touch on a subject that feels like it's it, we, it also fits here. Um, so we're going to do that again. We're going to uh, take an episode that we called, I think, Don't Get Bamboozled by Big Food or something like that. Bamboozled. Bamboozled. Um, so uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Before we get into that, I wanted to just ask you, it's a question that I think about a lot. Um, it's a really simple question that I don't think has a super simple answer, but it's uh, it, how hard is it to just eat clean every meal? Because it's something that, I don't know anybody who doesn't struggle with that to mm -hmm. some degree. I think that there are people uh, like yourself. Um, I think of other people like Austin Maliolo who mm -hmm. don't seem to struggle with the the back and forth of like, I'm just going to eat the bagel now, right? So I'm curious from your perspective, how hard is it to eat clean, if not every meal, pretty much every meal? Um, it's really hard. It's really, really, really hard. Um, for a number of different reasons. But the the, the quick hard hitting thing is it's not easy. And the people that make it look easy um, or have either done it long enough that they're inside that habit loop or um, they're good actors. <laughs> Like they're it's, not like they're not actually eating that clean. No, like you, like they're like it makes they make it look easy. Like gotcha, you might gotcha. like you said for myself. Like it, it makes it look so easy. It's yeah. like it's not. Like mm -hmm. I freaking love chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I love cereal. It's every day. It's a choice. Every meal. So the average American makes two hundred forty seven nutritional choices a day. So two hundred forty seven times I have to sit down and think. Like and hopefully we get in the habit loop where you don't have to think. But there's an opportunity for it to go one way or the other. It's not just one big giant decision saying like, yes, it's not like buying a car. I'm gonna take right. the Chevy and now you drive a Chevy for the next five years. It's every day, time and time again, it's 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 a really hard thing. And it, um, it's funny because I think a lot of people that struggle with it look at people that are doing it well and they, they, they give themselves an out. It's like, well, that person, it's easy for them. Yeah. You know, like um, I've had relatives that have said like, well, it's easy for you to do it. It's like, no, it's not. It's really hard. And it's going to be hard. And it's not like it all of a sudden flips and it gets easier. It gets easier in a sense, but it doesn't go away. It's kind of like the rolling, um, you know, anything that builds momentum. Yeah. So if you've gone to the gym 28 days this month, well, going the 29th is not a big deal. But if you have not gone to the gym in 28 days, going that first time is a big deal. So you not having the cookie today is a big deal if you've had cookies for the last seven years straight. Yeah. It does get easier in that sense, but still the decisions don't go away, the temptations don't go away. I still love the taste of those things. It's still hard. Mm -hmm. Is it hard mostly because uh, of habits? And, and we've talked about habits and habit loops a lot before, but is it simply you either have one habit or the other and a lot of people for whatever reason have quote unquote bad habit when it comes to food? The habit piece is one side of it, but I think that the bigger side of it is we're set up to fail, like really badly set up to fail. 
we wouldn't even have this discussion if we had a pod, well, for a couple of reasons, but if we had a podcast 300 years ago, <laughs> it would be brilliant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is, if we were having this conversation 300, we wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a conversation. It's ridiculous. It would be ridiculous right. because we hadn't been set up to fail. Back then, you the food that you had available was the food that you ate, and it didn't have a shelf life. And when you went to the local market to buy beads, you went there to buy beads, and maybe there was some other stuff there. But it's not like you know you're going to. Um, we go to Home Depot now. You go to Home Depot to do a, a home improvement project, and at the checkout aisle, there is this like screaming your name, like Patrick. I'm a Kit Kat. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't I be so good? <laughs> Like, Patrick, yeah. I'm a monster energy. Yep. You could use a pick-me-up. Like, Patrick, I'm called Funyuns. Like, try me. Even like, we remember this. Yeah. Even like 30 years ago, when you went to get gas, you went to a gas station to get gas. And there was no other options. Now, when you go to a gas station, every single one is this processed food mecca. Yeah. Where it's like, the choices are ridiculous. It's terribleness so that's why it's hard Mm -hmm. you have a two this is here's uh, let's put it this way baseball is a big major revenue produce major league baseball all professional sports teams in major league baseball it's a huge business right Mm -hmm. do you know if the the red sox didn't sell a season ticket they're still profitable after paying all the salaries paying the the airplanes to go fly they don't sell a hot dog or a ticket to Fenway Park, they're still profitable. Because of like TV? TV, exactly. It's just a huge, huge, huge industry. It's $10 billion, $10 billion. And because of that, they hire really smart people like Bill James, Moneyball, right? And they analyze this and they figure out what's the best trends and where should we putting the money and who should we pulling under our team and how can we kind of hack the system? That's for a $10 billion industry. The process, $10 billion entry for baseball. And we understand why people put so much money into analytics Mm -hmm. and stats and um, players and all the rest. And the processed food industry supersedes that by a magnitude that's insane. Baseball, all baseball together is $10 billion. The processed food industry is $2 trillion. For us to be naive enough to think like there aren't really smart people out there trying to hack our way into our mouths, like trying to figure out what is the best marketing strategies, what is the right placement, what is the right food textures, what's the way we can get them to not, can't just have one, once you pop, you can't stop. Like that's their job, $2 trillion to get you to eat another one of their products. Mm -hmm. We're set up to fail. And there is very little money in the local organic farmers markets. There's the profit margins are so slim. Right. And there's big food is crushing us. That's why it's so hard. Now, once we realize that and realize like, okay, I'm up against this monster, but they don't own me. I still control it. And when I control this, I make my own decisions. It's 247 a day. It's going to be hard. But that law of aggregation of marginal gains, if I can make the small little changes every day in five years, that adds up to huge differences from normal habits to good ones and then extremely from replace a bad habit with mm-hmm. a good one. So instead of going for the cookie jar at or the, the, um, the hard candy at the office at three o'clock, going for a walk down the stairs and back up, you replace it with eliminate a bad one, replace it with a good one. And in a week, there's no difference. In a month, there's probably no difference. In six months, you still might not see a difference. But in six years, there's a drastic difference. Right. All right, cool. That's great. Let's um, dive into your conversation with Dan. First off, Ben, what is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Alligator. You've eaten alligator? Yep. Pretty good, right? Or kangaroo. Oh, I haven't eaten that. Yeah. Wow, how was that? Uh, the honest answer is I don't, I don't remember. You don't remember. I remember the alligator. The alligator tastes like calamari. It's really good. Did I say that right? Calamari? It's calamari. Yeah, I said yeah. it weird, right? Calamari. Yeah. You said it like you would say kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's the weirdest thing I've ever eaten. The weird, yeah. That's not super weird. Like I've had alligator. Kangaroo? Well, kangaroo is really weird. Yeah. Was I don't it? remember what kangaroo tastes like. I'm, I, Roo for short. Yeah. I, I, Fried yeah. roux. 
I don't, I don't think it was fried. It wasn't fried. The Roast, alligator was. Roasted roux? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you have it in Florida? No, I had it in uh, Stowe, Vermont, of all places. Why? So, so weird, right? That's like, that's like getting lobster in like Idaho. I know. It doesn't really seem right. Really not. What was I thinking? <laughs> regionally? Like, that's a regionally. Uh, yeah. Alligator was a poor <laughs> choice. <laughs> well, there's not even alligators within hundreds of miles. I know. It's one of the northernmost state. <laughs> The, you know those Vermont alligators. You got to watch out if you're you're going down a mountain, you're skiing, and then so strange. there's just gators everywhere. Yeah, the bayou up there. So Ben, we're gonna talk about something today. Um, unhealthy, seemingly unhealthy health food. So seemingly healthy, seemingly healthy, unhealthy, unhealthy foods. health foods. But he- foods. We're gonna name that the title. Just seemingly healthy, unhealthy foods. Yep. There's some commas in there. <laughs> And there's, this is actually a big list. And um, you had a great point about like the kind of like the teardrop. Do you just want to walk through the teardrop and well, kind of how yeah. you describe so that? So my, 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 my teardrop is basically there's um, there's certain percentage of the certain populations within the population that are doing certain things regards to their health. Did I, did I say anything there? That was almost like a politician saying That's something. a lot of population <laughs> That's right there. That's a lot of like you know how much saying I, words that mean nothing. You know how much the population scares me? You just doubled the population. <laughs> so here's my take on that is there is um, like the, if you think of the shape of a teardrop, there's the smallest percentage, which is the top of it, which is the people that, um, that get it and are doing it, right? They understand what creates health and then they're making the sacrifices both in the kitchen and in the gym to do the right things. They're the people, a lot of people in our, are in our gym, right? They realize that it's about eating clean. They understand what eating clean is. It's meat, vegetables, nuts, seeds, some fruit, little stars, some sugar. Mm-hmm. It's the way we say it is, is eat um, real food, not too much, mostly plants. It's we're the same thing, right? Um, they also realize that constantly varied functional movements performed at relatively high intensity is the prescription, is the recipe for, um, for health, wellness, fitness, whatever you want there. There's a bigger subset of the population, which are, again, they are making the sacrifices. They are working hard in the kitchen and at the gym, but they're not getting it. They don't get it. These it's are people- Still towards the top. Yeah, so it's, but yeah, so if you think of a way to shoot teardrop of shape, the first one is there's probably 10, 15% of the population that are doing what we're doing. Then there's probably 20, 30% that are doing what, what, what I'm talking about, which is they go to the gym three, four, five days a week, but they're sitting on ellipticals and they're reading magazines while doing it, or they're sitting and doing bicep curls and calf raises. So they're going to the gym, making sacrifices, but they're not getting the same benefit that you would if you did constantly varied functional movements at high intensity. Mm-hmm. Similar in the kitchen, they're working hard. They're, 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 they're not eating exactly what they're, they're desiring. Like they're not going for the cookies and the cakes and yeah. the Doritos. They're going for health foods, but they're going for things that are not moving the needle for them as much. This podcast, I hope is targeted at those people. Now, just to finish the talk about the teardrop, the majority of the population, 50, 60% of the population don't get it and aren't trying, right? They, they are making little sacrifices here and there. Maybe they have a gym membership and they don't go to the all you can eat buffet and stuff themselves. They're not getting pizza every night, but they're not really trying to do it. This talk is really for the people. I think it's the people in this gym. I just want to make sure Everybody here that's trying to make the changes isn't getting duped, isn't get letting bamboozled. marketing bamboozled. Love Let's it. Get a that's such, out. That's what the title is. Don't get bamboozled. Don't get bamboozled. That should be the title of this one. Yeah. Love it. Don't get played by the big so food. So that's what this is. Don't get bamboozled Don't get played. by the by by big food. Because they're tricking us. They're saying this food's healthy Tricks are for, for you. kids. That's one of them. That's one of them. Yeah. They're 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 working really hard to make sure that you think this is healthy and it's not. Mm-hmm. And there's, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, uh, we were watching, I was watching Hard Knocks and I told you about this. The Cleveland yes. Browns fall into that kind of like second part. Um, I would say the majority of professional and collegiate sports fall into, unfortunately. The Cleveland Browns might be way towards the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So they might be like, Sorry, people from Cleveland. They might be like, uh, like, an, uh, like a high level AAU high school team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're making those decisions. <laughs> Just but for your reference. As you yeah. said, you were watching Hard Knocks and they were like, I, we, we went to the nutritionist and our nutritionist told us to get this. And it was like really not. It the, was like smart there, food and there diet was, coke. There was some, um, I, they had epic bars. They did. So that's, yeah. that's not a bad, but right, smart food. It's, smart food would certainly fall into our category of what we're talking about, which is 
food that is marketed to us like it's healthy, but mm -hmm. is not. So my, my, my hope is in this podcast, we just pull back the curtain a little bit and expose some other things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not just food, it's kind of like drinks and ingredients that you put in. So yeah, right. Anything that you can put in your body. Yes. Um, I, th I say we just kind of go through an order. So let's go, uh, let's start like with categories. Yeah, so let's start with breakfast, right? Yeah. So, like breakfast. Um, the first one is because you said tricks are for kids. Tricks are for kids. Is cereal. Not. So, yeah. most people get that like tricks and lucky charms and cinnamon toast crunch are not good for you. But then there is a huge, huge industry telling us that cereal is good for you. If you get you know, Kashi cereal, if you get um, even things like Rice Krispies or Raisin Bran, if you get uh, Special K, you know, that's been marketed to us like, you know, th there's, a, there's a Special K weight loss thing. Like mm -hmm. it's like, it's just marketed to us as a health food and it could not be farther like from it. like fiber one. Perfect example, right? Those could not be farther from it. If we know that the goal is to lower, so here's the reason why. You're trying to, as, a human being is to lower the insulin response you have to food, which insulin is responsible for creating, to pull sugar out of the blood. And what that is doing when it's insulin and too much insulin is released is it's creating inflammation in the body, hear that as disease, and it's creating fat storage and fat blockage, meaning you get fatter and you can't burn your body fat. It's this horrible thing. Hyperinsulinemia is the precursor to almost every chronic disease. So hyper, too much insulin, insulinemia in the blood. What we wanna do is make sure we are not falling into that category of hyperinsulinemia. Mm -hmm. Well, that is purely correlated to basically the glycemic load of the foods that you're eating. Meaning, how much carbohydrates and how sugary are those carbohydrates? Cereal is, even if it's a lower sugar, it's so much carbohydrates per serving that it's a really big culprit for one of these health, supposed health foods that is anything but. So let's stay away from cere all cereals. And who has one bowl? No one has one bowl. Right. You gotta so finish off the milk. This was the biggest thing for me is like a, uh, a, a, you know, learning about this, I literally, I think I've talked about this before, literally without exaggeration would have five to seven bowls of cereal oh, yeah. a day. Because yeah. I bought in the marketing and it was, I, I was a triathlete and I was a single bachelor, like what's, it's just cereal is the best thing in the world that was ever created in yeah. terms of being a bachelor and somebody, it's just like amazing. It tastes phenomenal. Um, but had I kept on that track, I would be in a bad place right now. Mm -hmm. So first one is cereals, breakfast cereals, put granola in that category as well. Um, next one is bagels. Same reason, bagels, regardless, it's like skinny bagels. And back in the nineties and early two thousands, everybody that was trying to be health conscious had bagels instead of donuts. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a, a culprit for the exact same reason. Super high carb, I get it, not tons of sugar, not tons of fat. It's so high carbohydrate, it's gonna have a major instant response in your body. And usually it's, I mean, you just have it by yourself, like by itself for the most part. Or like Even if you're a having a juice or- If you're having it like as a bagel egg sandwich, it's better, it's right? It's better. But if you're having, yeah, as you just said, just, a bagel and juice would be really yeah. bad, right? That's and it's a, like, that was like, in high school, that was the thing- It's just had. empty calories, yeah. empty carbs. Yeah. It's like you're getting no nutrients for what you want. Even if we're gonna talk about whole wheat in a second, but people get whole wheat bagels or everything bagels and they think they're doing a better job. It's a better you're choice not. than maybe one of the other options within the bagel family, but. Uh, arguable possible, and debatable arguably. and maybe worse. Yeah, We could go down that rabbit hole. Let's, let's argue it. Um, big, <laughs> let's argue. Big arguer guy. Um, next one would be um, yogurt. And this isn't the world of like Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt, you could you, you could talk to some health benefits. You're talking about Danimal's drinkable yogurt. But like any sort of like any kids yogurt for sure is terrible. Just crazy amounts of high sugar, no nutrients, very little nutrients in mm -hmm. it. Um, but we definitely want to stay away from any sort of uh, flavored yogurt that includes vanilla yogurt. But certainly anyone that has like fruit on the bottom and certainly ones that come in like squeezable packages for kids. Yeah, That's a really um, super high sugar, um, really nutrient void snack or breakfast for, for people to be having. The ones that have the candy in the top and then you peel the oh my God. foil back and then you dump that in. It's that like sounds Oreo amazing. yogurt. It was really good. Oh my God. But so you have, so. That's why I was a fat kid. So. Yeah, so, I mean, with that, like, you go to like, you're kind of like going into the world of like, because people eat it for breakfast, they think it's okay. Yeah. It's like pancakes and waffles. Pancakes and waffles are dessert. It's just cake. Yeah. It's just cupcakes are just, are just cupcakes. That's all, that's all a muffin is. Yeah. Except it has different names for it. It's blueberry. It's like a time it's connotation. A, like, it's a cupcake. Yeah. yeah. You're having a dessert. So you're having a waffle. No, you're having cake. You're having pancakes. No, you're having cake. 
Same it's ingredients. Like, those are the same thing. It's this, it's, it's flour, um, butter, and sugar. Mm -hmm. That's what you're making with. That's what you make cake and cookies with. Yeah. You're having dessert. Um, the last one, which is um, probably the, the one that's done the best job of marketing, uh, cereal's done a really good job, is um, um, flavored or instant oatmeal. So if you have like the oatmeal, it's cinnamon raisin or, or like, like apple cinnamon, cinnamon yeah. you like rip off the top, you pour in a cup, you add water, you put it in the microwave, and it's like, it's still, that is bad for you. It's not a medium, it's not an okay, it's bad for you. These foods I'm listing right now are not like the okays, they're not like it's a better choice than, they are bad for you. There's a lot of studies that people have gone from a clean eating diet to eating exactly the foods I'm talking about now and going to talk about, and they become sick. They get diabetes, they get chronic disease from eating these foods. It's not like, okay, but they're a better choice than this. It's bad. Menthol cigarettes or Marlboro Reds, they're all bad. It's not different degrees. This is bad food for you. Was that the basis of the My Sugar film? Yes, it's exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's not My Sugar, it's just called, it may, you own it? My Sugar film? Yeah, it's called. That Sugar. It's called. Um, the Sugar film? Uh, th that Sugar that film. That Sugar film. Yeah. Yeah. But iTunes. if you own it, it's if you own I a copy own, of it, I actually bought we could be talking about your copy it on of iTunes. my copy of my. It's my sugar film. Yes, no one else can watch it. So those are the the major culprits for breakfast. Yeah, um, naturally in the order of the day, we'd go to lunch from there. I guess. Okay, so lunch, um, brunch. Here's what most is people it Sunday? do. Sunday, <laughs> right? Brunch. If you're watching this on Sunday, brunch. Um, you're probably gonna have to mimosas, bottomless mimosas. Are those good for you or no? Absolutely, hundred percent. Go okay, for it. Cool. Juice and alcohol. Yeah. What better combination? <laughs> Orange juice and alcohol. Um, okay, so for for lunch, there's obviously so we're, again we're talking about the things that like people are trying to do a good job, but they're missing the mark. People get salads. Ooh, this is a good one. Phenomenal choice. Except that when they get their salad, they go for salad dressing. What we want to do when we get a salad dressing is look. This is for everything we do, and we can talk about some like big. Uh, like red flags, yep. Um, but salad dressing is bad for you. So this is like, I was just looking at salad dressing the other day, it's Newman's organic olive oil and vinegar. It says like right on it, it's like organic olive oil and vinegar. And that's what it says on the front. They got a good looking label, but. Great looking label. And I, yeah. I picked up and I was about to squirt it on. I was like, I'm gonna flip it over on the back. The number one ingredient is canola oil. It's what they're saying is we put olive oil, olive oil in, it. in it. There's yeah. some in it, but the number one ingredient is canola oil, which is bad for you. Worse is vegetable oil, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure we're avoiding those things. So, salad dressing is usually full of sugar. By the way, three grams of sugar in a serving of salad dressing is a lot. So if you look at it and like oh, it's only three grams, in a tablespoon. think of how big that serving is. You have no like, one uses a tablespoon. You have two or three servings yeah. that you're getting. You're, there goes your salad. Yeah. It's like you're putting just dumping half a teaspoon of sugar on your salad. Yeah. So let's watch out for the bad oils and the sugar. Um, my pa my parents own, my parents own two restaurants. They people come in every day and they're like, oh, I'm being good today. Like let me get a salad, and then they dump like blue cheese or ranch on. Like they think they're making a good decision. But it's in, at the end, it's really not. So because I just want to make sure, um, because it's blue cheese ranch and it's higher fat, doesn't mean it's bad. Look at the ingredients, look at the oils. Yeah. Don't look at the fat content, look at the type of oils. Vegetable oils and canola oils are the really popular ones, salad dressing, both really bad. Olive oil and avocado oils um, um, are, are good, good choices. You hear about the oil mafia? No, uh, yeah, like, yeah, so counterfeit. Like, like um, counterfeit olive oil. Yeah, that's so we've, ta yeah, we've talked about that, so. It's a big. Yeah, be careful with that, but that's yeah. really going down a rabbit hole. For sure. Yeah. Um, next one that people are doing is they're like, um, I'm gonna get rice. And it's big in our community, people that do macros. Mm -hmm. um, rice, if you are trying, this is the big thing, if you are trying to up the carb content of your meal, this is a big highlight thing. If you are trying to get more carbohydrates in your meal, pretty good option. Because it's just, what just rice carbs. is, is glucose. That's what, rice is glucose. Glucose is sugar. You are getting sugar with your meals. Now people are like, but it's not sugar. It's like, you eat, once your body hits your tongue, it starts the digestive process, it literally turns into table sugar in your mouth before it even starts to digest, at that first sign of the digestive process. So recognize that if you are trying to get more of that in your meal, okay choice. Most of us are not. So we should not be seeking out or adding in rice into our meal. Yep. Um, the third one there is beans. 
Beans have been marketed to us in so many different ways as high fiber, high protein, high nutrients. I'm not going to say it's the worst thing for you, but if we're doing it, they have um, these things called lectins, which is a protective outer shell, which makes it toxic so that the beans, the seeds don't get eaten. It's their self-defense mechanisms. They can't run away or fight, so they put this protective mechanism over them, which they can't be eaten raw by animals. Yep. Good for them, right? Really good for them. Except what we do is we cook them, and then we eat them, and they're digestible. But it doesn't get rid of the lectins, which are anti-nutrients and basically strip the lining of your gut and cause all this bad stuff. The way you can get rid of, the way you can over, um, override those lectins is by soaking your beans overnight, usually with some sort of like a um, um, bathtub in the bathtub. <laughs> so you put them in a you put them in a container at room temperature, like literally with water and a little bit of apple cider vinegar or lemon or a kefir or something like that. Leave it overnight, then drain them, strain them, maybe wash them again, put them in, and now they're ready for cooking. So you do that with rice and oats too, right? Yes, rice and oats um, is the exact same thing, um, but beans. I'm, Yep. Yeah. So um, beans can be good for you. They can be if you follow that process. Very cool. Chronologically, we're good. Snacks. To snacks. Snacks. Yeah. So Midday we have, snack. So snacks. Um, the biggest, like the, the ones, the people have done the best job of this is like the, the bar people, right? Um, particularly the protein bars. Secondarily, would be like granola bars. Um, but the protein bar people, and I'm not talking about like Quest bars or RX bars. I'm talking about like um, kind bars. And uh, so that'd be like the granola bar people. Those yeah. are like the middle of the road. But what I'm really talking about is like, um, like um, metrics. Mass gainer. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, and like the EAS bars and the, the ones that say like protein. The bars like, with huge font. The I think ones that's that, a red flag. Yeah. The, <laughs> it's got like size 72 font on there. The ones that taste like a Snickers bar yeah. with some protein. Because what those bars are is a Snickers bar with some protein. Yeah. That's literally, if you went ingredient for ingredient, Back to back with one of those bars, it has chocolate, nougat, caramel. The other one has chocolate, nougat, and caramel. Yeah. And protein. Protein. <laughs> yeah. It's literally a candy bar with protein. Now, the big kind of um, red flags are there is like, again, look at the kind of oils that they're using. Um, and then they're really good at hiding sugar. So a Cliff Bar, the number one ingredient of Cliff Bar, I think might be oats, but the number two ingredient is rice syrup. Yeah. Rice syrup is sugar, sugar. Yeah. they're putting but they're like they're like this community thinks rice is good for them so they call it rice syrup mm -hmm. or they're like this community is um really health conscious so they'll call it maple syrup or this con this community is really health conscious so they'll call it agave and so agave is another one of those red flags agave in our community has been like it's okay it's natural it comes from cactus true true and true but our community if you ask them about high fructose corn syrup they'd be like it's bad it's all fructose well, high, high fructose corn syrup is 50 to 70% fructose. Agave is 90% fructose. Wow. You could argue yeah. it's worse for you than high fructose corn syrup. Sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar. I don't care if it's rice. I don't care if it's um, maple syrup. I don't care if it's agave or high fructose corn syrup. It's all the same thing. Once it gets in there, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So be really conscious of what those things, what the, how they're trying, become savvy, become detective, and how are they trying to trick me? When you look at foods, don't look at the nutrition facts. Doesn't matter. Look at the ingredients. That's what matters. Typically, the less ingredients, the better, right? Yeah, typically I, that. Ideally. But if you were to eat a fruit salad, it'd have a lot of ingredients. Yeah. If you were to have um, um, gasoline, it would have one ingredient. So yeah. it's not necessarily That's true. Yeah. one is not have necessarily. a big old bowl of high fructose. Corn syrup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't think. But I'm generally sure. speaking, yes. But more so, like decipher and learn what these things are saying. Love it. You know, like another one there is like trail mix. Like trail mix is offered. Like, oh my gosh, it's healthy. It's like we eat when you're camping. Is that a playlist for hiking? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Trail mix. But yeah, that's oh, that's good. A trail mix. I stole it from Family Guy. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take credit for that. But like, you know, if it has a bunch of dried fruit in it, not the best. If it has raise, if it has uh, M and M's in it, obviously. It's just a it's treasure better. hunt. It's a treasure hunt. Have it has like has it has like pieces of like white chocolate chips in it. It's yeah. like, oh my god! It's, there's a reason it's so delicious. Yeah. It's like a, amazing. So that's another snack. <laughs> yeah. Um, moving on to like, let's go to like uh, um, like drinks. 
So drinks is, again, they've done a phenomenal job of marketing these things. Mimosas. Yes, no. right. <laughs> um, but obviously, like we talk a lot about like sports drinks and Gatorade, that's obviously really bad. If you're trying to get in electrolytes and or salt, it's the same thing. Um, you're better off just adding in some salt. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for carbohydrates, it might not be the worst thing for you. So if you're, there's a place for sports drinks. Snacking on them is not one of them. So like Marathon Row, like. So Marathon it, Row, like, we had people um, have Gatorade but here's the thing, in the last hour, because it spikes your insulin so high, which is a good thing, all of this energy, but then what happens on the, on the far side of that? Boom, crash. So in the last hour, gotcha. not yeah. the biggest deal, but for the first two hours, no way. Imagine mm -hmm. if we have a crash in the middle, we have much slower releasing carbohydrates. That'd be wild, a rowing like crash. Like you can, and things like that. Oh, you're good at this today. <laughs> people, people just bumping into each other on the railroad. So there is a place yeah. for it, but you gotta be really conscious of where that is. Just like there's a place for rice in your meals, but it's gotta be for a certain purpose. For sure, yeah. Um, other one obviously is energy drinks, read the ingredients, it's crap. So what I mean by it's like Monster and Red Bull and stuff like that. Dad, you watching? Terrible, terrible, terrible. You should really avoid that stuff. Um, wrecking, ha wreaking havoc on your health, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Go for a clean, if you're looking for energy, look for a clean, Caffe caffeine source, green, green tea, um, highball, something like that, Kill Cliff, um, um, the newer Kill Cliff uh, Ignite flavor, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, one of the big ones is iced tea, bottled iced tea, like honest iced tea. Like it, it, there's, there's flowers on it, it looks so healthy. Yeah. And you look, flip over the back, or like Arnold, uh, uh, Newman's has it, or Arnold, Arnold, Arnold why am I saying it? Arnold Palmer. Why, I had such a hard time saying that. Oh. Arnold Palmer. Arnie Palmy alert. <laughs> um, those get. <laughs> Who wants some Arnie Palmy? Um, or like lemonades, obviously huge, but um, a, a bottled iced tea, unless it's truly like chilled green or black tea, is going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 50 grams of sugar in them. Mm -hmm. Like, hor like, dude, you'd be better off. You might be better off get, grabbing a soda. Yeah. Like, for real. Yeah. Like, you're doing. You're trying really hard, I get it, iced tea, but you're missing the mark horrifically. This is why we're exposing this stuff. When I lived in the South, sweet tea was, sweet tea was hot down there. Um, juice, obviously a huge one. You should be thinking juice is sugar. Like juice is sugar. What you're doing is you're taking the juice, removing all the nutrients and having the leftover removing sugar. The fiber basically. Yeah, it, yeah, fiber and most of the nutrients. It's yeah. like, look at the nutrition list. Like look up nutrition facts of an apple. It's like really pretty solid. Like I want you to eat apples. Look up the nutrition facts of, um, of apple juice. Pretty dismal. Mm -hmm. um, soy milk. So soy milk is like been marketed to us as a health conscious alternative to milk. Soy, for the most part, is a negative. There's um, a lot, isoflavins, uh, isoflavonoids. There's, I'm not gonna get into the total science of it, but things that cause estrogen and other bad things that happen in the body. Yep. Um, it's a thing that we want to avoid, not seek out. You're better off with raw whole milk than you are with soy milk. Or even better, if you're like, well, I don't know about whole milk, like high fat content, and I don't know about that thing from cows, and I'm lactose intolerant cool, but you still want milk, don't go for soy milk, go for a nut milk, cashew or almond milk. You're much, much better off. There's still bad options on the almond milk yep, side. Yep, for sure. Like, so unsweetened and look again, read the ingredient label. That's a great point Yeah. because they, they're going to trick you as well. So look for something with as little um, ingredients as possible. What you're looking for is something that basically has almonds. Almonds. That's it. Yes. There's or a, make your own. Yeah. Milk those almonds. It takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> Stay up late at night just to get a glass. Yes. How many, what's the conversion right there? I don't know. Um, okay, so last thing to talk about in terms of this is um, kind of those like red flag ingredients. And we hit a lot of them, like mm -hmm. agave, brown rice syrup, um, uh, you know, maple syrup, the things that they're trying to cover up um, sugar with, they're yeah. trying to say. But another one is like um, when they say like whole wheat, like if it says whole wheat or even worse is like enriched whole wheat, like enriched whole wheat, what they're saying there is they're processing it. They're ripping it down and they're pumping some vitamins mm -hmm. back into it. Um, so the biggest thing I want people to do out of this is don't look at the front of the package. That's the marketer's ability to like yell and scream at you and be like, I am telling you this is healthy for you. Please don't look at our ingredient list. Yeah. And then they're, 
They know that they're talking to health conscious people, so they know you're gonna flip it over and they're gonna try and trick you with that by calling it something other than it is. Enriched, they're gonna say it's uh, maple syrup or um, evaporated cane juice or organic sugar, or, and they're just tricking you again. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's things like uh, hot, the bad oils, soybean oil, vegetable oil, um, canola oil, all bad. And then from there, it's like chemicals. We want to certainly stay away from chemicals and things with numbers next to them, like red 40, yeah. yellow number five, and stuff like that. Mambo number five. I don't know if there's, am I missing any of those type you of things? You didn't get that one. I got it. <laughs> Mambo. Lou Bagel. I'm just done. Lou Bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Bagels. Um, the Jackson Five. Are you just naming bands now? Take five. Oh, you're Take, saying numbers. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> five Fingers of Funk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, something the, Trio. The John Butler Trio. That's its number, but it's sort of not three. The, John, the Trio, I guess so. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a, bridging the gap between words and numbers. That's, that's next level stuff. It's like that color wheel concert I want to have. Have you heard of this? No. We we're talking about like, if oh, you it's have like, a I've, sweet concert, you have but like- But it's all by pink, colors? Yeah, Pink, Green Day, Pink Black Floyd. Sabbath, <laughs> pink oh, pink, Floyd. Pink Floyd. Pink, as well as Pink Floyd. Pink, comma, oh, Black Pink Sa Floyd. Green Day. Um, hmm. um, the Blue Man Group will be there on the percussion. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a sweet concert. <laughs> If there's any concert promoters out there, colors. please. Yeah. yeah. Green Day, Yellow Card. Oh, look at you. Um, trying to think of there's colors. Be a red. Barney will be there because he's purple and he sings. Is there a red something? Red Hot Chili Pepper. Oh, my God. You're yeah. good at this. Yeah. That would be a sick concert. I've thought about this a lot. Oh, you already yeah. It's a little bit for everyone. Like, you got Barney for the kids. You got Red Hot Chili Peppers for every, anyone, I guess. Deep Purple. Deep Purple. Yeah. Good, right? Purple Rain. That's just a song. We should... So, so they those, have to know, all, those, cover, all those bands have to cover. They have to cover songs about colors as well. That's some next level stuff. We gotta start compiling. Contra promoters, reach out. But that was um, that was really good. That was really good. Uh, I, I Thanks, mean, Dan. Yeah, great job, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so proud of you. Um, oh, that means a lot. But you know, next time you go to the grocery store, ideally, like hopefully, we're just making better decisions don't and more get informed. Duped. Don't get. Don't get bamboozled. Bamboozled, that's, and that's. That's, and that's the CFN way. Don't get bamboozled. I'll be disappointed. <laughs>